is if I felt that uh, because I wasn't from the West Coast that I couldn't recruit the best players in the country. I think the Arizona name, the brand name, speaks for itself. There's a reason that people and players have chosen Zay, uh, Arizona. <laughs> Zay, <laughs> forgive me. Arizona for for uh, a quarter of a century. I mean, it's not just five years. Even during the last two years, which I know has been a little different, you have three players that are probably going to go in the first round at the end of the day. So. Uh, to me, it's a matter of selling this great place, not necessarily where you're from, but if you're asking me, are we going to recruit that area, obviously. And uh, that's going to be not just me, it's going to be the staff. And it's going to take a little time to get that assembled. Is this a very short term? Do you plan on looking at JC guys? Could. Um, not not JC guys because they only have two years. Uh, I'm trying to get the best people. If that's a high school kid, great. If it's a junior college guy, great. Uh, but want to recruit the right players and people that fit what we're doing and uh, make sure that we get a chance to know them. It's not easy making those decisions right now with watching a guy in one, one open gym, which is going to be really the snapshot that I'm going to have in certain cases. So we're going to err on the side of, of trying to be patient and do it the best we can. Realistically, you have a week. I mean, it's like next, next week. I mean, yeah. how could you have a guy or two or three? I think so. Obviously, we have prior relationships. You know, uh, we don't necessarily have to see certain players because just familiarity with players that we were recruiting uh, or know that we're now here will lead to, and open some doors up. But uh, but we're gonna we're gonna move the right way on that. And like I said in the press conference, you don't always have to recruit the class at hand. If you're smart, sometimes moving down one class and getting to know them better could be the answer. Uh, much more so than trying to make a quick fix. You might leave a couple of rides open right away. I mean, you've got Good. a positive six. Seven, yeah. Seven, I hope not that many. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, how many do you think you might try and get in at least to get by first year? That'll depend on who qualifies, if, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. I don't want to say we have to get four guys or we can't function. If we get the right two, that's better than taking two additional just because you need the bodies. Because the hard part is when you're going through a transition is to bring people in that in a year or two you're going to look at and say it's not a good fit. And, uh, for us, we want to keep the bar high and make sure we make good, good decisions here early. Chase Buttinger announced he's going to the NBA. Did you come in here already assuming that he was leaving, Jordan was leaving, and yeah. maybe Nick was on the fence? I hope I didn't scare Chase. I mean, it's, <laughs> the, the timing is, is uh, almost awkward. Uh, no, I, I had heard that he was going to. And, you know, if you have an opportunity to be an NBA first-round pick, be the same thing when someone looks at me, why, why would you leave Xavier and go to Arizona? I mean, you have a, an incredible opportunity that can change your life, and of course, and, and I look at both of those guys, and I'm sure everyone here is very proud of them. I'm going to talk to a lot of different people if one's available. I just, I wish I could be more clear because I'm not so sure if, if one is, like I mentioned, one of my coaches is, could potentially become the new coach at Xavier, and if that happened, the dynamics of my staff will be completely different. Which other assistant will stay with you? Potentially. Yeah, and, and if Chris got the job, you'd have at least one opening. Would you expect to get somebody somebody else to work with the past, or would you get a guy with less coaches? Maybe a, maybe a little bit of both. I certainly have some relationships with different coaches that are out here. But I want to, like in recruiting, I know I'm sounding the same, get the best person that's more important than where he's from, because uh, if, you're, if you know what you're doing, you're good as a coach. You have Arizona on your chest. That's going to, that's going to and, really get you certain players. And, and Coach, on the verbal that they did receive a couple months ago, is that still on the plate or is on the table? I don't know anything about it right now. When did, could you go out in public in Cincinnati without you? Is it a physical atmosphere for you at all? The longer that you're at a place, the more recognizable you are. I would say it would be a smaller scale than, than here. Uh, because Cincinnati has the Reds, the Bengals, uh, the University of Cincinnati and Xavier, and you combine all those elements and more people, uh, you're not going to be as recognizable. What's the next for you and your family? You know, we're, we're flying by the seat of our pants. Uh, I'm lucky because my kids are on spring break. If they weren't, it would be hard for me to bring them out here. Uh, but we have a few days here and really hope, most importantly, that they can get their feet on the ground and look around and feel comfortable and get a feel for maybe where we're going to live and, and then go back over the weekend, which I'll probably accompany them back just to make sure they're all right. You haven't seen the campus yet? You haven't been, what have you? No, I haven't taken a tour. Um, saw it on my way in. How tough is it to accept the job without seeing the campus or anything? If you just put two and two together, you know it's a beautiful campus. Uh, 
I was way more concerned with uh, who the athletic director was, uh, the support of uh, Dr. Shelton, and making sure I had an opportunity to meet him, and you know the feeling of 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 what's the most important, and that is uh, the great support that exists. And campus will take care of itself. Uh, if you went back to Cincinnati and saw Xavier's campus, you probably would say, you know, boy, it's a small campus. They're not going there just because of the way the building looks. They're going there because of how they're treated. And uh, same thing here. When did you know you were first on Arizona's radar? Um, probably about a week and a half ago. I would say a week ago. Was it? Was there some indirect contact months ago? Did they no. kick the tires? Or? Not really. You know, uh, the way it works today, so many people ask you, you don't really know how credible it is. Would you be interested if this job opened or, or whatever? But uh, my stance was just really focusing on doing the best I can coaching Xavier. And if we go to the Elite Eight, great. Next year, we'll try and go to a Final Four. Just letting that take its course. If doing that allowed me to have uh, the opportunity of a lifetime, which this is, then certainly I'm, I'm going to jump on it like just about every coach would have. Well, have, you, have you ever worked with your uh, brother before? No, I coached him. You coached him? Yeah. I, I had to be the, the hardest coach. Uh, but I was the assistant when he played at NC State, and uh, but never worked uh, worked with him. Is that anything that you guys have ever talked about, maybe getting together down the road? You know, it, it's hard because uh, in some some places, and I, I haven't even bothered to ask. Nepotism is involved, where you may want to bring him on, and he's not able to you know, follow that rule. But he's an assistant in Ohio State right now, and he's in a great program. You talked about uh, about uh, Chase leaving. What about Nick? He's the one big question mark. Yeah. And obviously, same yeah. position and all that. He may be the key to start something for you. Right. Well, I'm going to talk to the whole team. Nick being one of them, and Nick's going to play for a point guard coach in these days. Uh, I'm the guy that you want to play for if you play that position just because that's who I am. That's the position I played. When I see the game, when I think the game, I, I really see it through the point guard. You'll see that with our style and system of play. And the guards that we've coached and I've coached have, have gotten better, and I, I think really enjoy the style. I've watched him. He's a terrific player. And hopefully he'll want to finish out in his senior year at Arizona and go out and really, like you said, I think starting kind of a new legacy as, as someone who bridged the gap between the old and the new. But uh, I also respect him a great deal. He's been through a lot. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to know them, and I know this, they certainly want to get to know me as best they can. Coach, you have a great relationship as a reporter with your Xavier AD. What about meeting with Jim Leibniz? You've a few times that really impressed you about him. Well, the thing that impressed me more about Jim is, is his reputation with with people in the profession, whether it be old coaches that have worked with him, other athletic directors, and you know his time spent on the NCAA committee and his tenure. You know, he has relationships over a 25, 30 year period of time and so many different people vouched for his honesty and the person that he is. And That's going to help me a lot more than me meeting him in two hours, but during my time he was nothing but fair and clearly made me feel like he wanted me to be, to be the coach which is really important when you're trying to, to go through that decision-making process.